Just waiting for the smoke to clear a little bit and now since we've had all those storms we've you know it killed off all the foliage and everything so look behind me as I'm talking and if you see any bears or anything coming my way just don't worry about the camera just run and I'll be right behind you so we're recording all this you know that right you're you're recording all this Okay, well, then I guess I better get with the program, huh, and get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Nancy Quinn. This is a really special high noon tea for me because it's our 20th time that we've been able to get together and talk and have tea recommendations and expand our circle of friends. So I was trying to think what is something really special that I could do? And my answer came when I received a letter. And it was so wonderful, I really wanted to share it with you. But first, I did want to talk to you about the kind of tea that I'm drinking today. It's from a company called Tezo or Tazo. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. But it's organic baked cinnamon apple. And it really does taste the way it sounds, and I think you'd be happy with it if you gave it a try. Now let me read you this letter, because I thought it was really special. Hi Nancy, tea in the mountains of Montana seems so great. Here are my tea stories. Have you ever had tea that has been pressed into a solid block? When moose hunting in Newfoundland years ago in the 70s, our guide would stop at noon to have lunch. A block of hard-pressed tea would be brought out and a chunk would be dropped into one of the most unique teapots that I had ever seen. It had a central funnel that heated the water to a boil in just two to three minutes. Years later, I found one at an antique shop in Massachusetts and it now sits on my fireplace hearth. One of these days, it will be used when I show our new scouts how to brew tea without a bag. Moving on, when I was a scout of about 13 years old on a winter camp out, we were without a hot beverage until I found two aged tea bags in one of my back pockets. Will two tea bags provide tea for 10 scouts? Sure, if you throw in some sassafras roots. So we had some kind of a concoction, weak beyond imagination, and with no sugar that was hot and yielded a lot of laughter from our group. This story was repeated up to a few years ago when the last of the troop and I got together. I'm sharing it with you so that as the Algonquins would say, a man's story is never lost if it's remembered by the campfire and the smoke of the campfire carries it to the heavens. Yep, tea is a beverage that leads to many stories by a campfire, sometimes more than coffee can offer. Keep your stories coming, Nancy. Enjoy your tea and repeat this story so that the smoke of your fire carries it to the heavens. I thought that that was just a beautiful letter and what a nice story that went along with it. So I hope that when you have your tea, and tell your stories that the smoke of your campfires will also carry them to the heavens. Thanks for spending time with me today. I'm really glad that you shared these few minutes with me and I'll see you again on the next High Noon Tea and it'll be number 21. I'll see you then. Bye.